about the things that well I know and the things that were sort of kind of hidden from me but knowing that I was at these places and these things actually took place and well it's a lot of subterfuge I think I even had to look that word up <laughs> to make sure I was, um, you know, saying it right. Well, to have driven extraterrestrial technology to have driven extraterrestrial technology when I was a kid and traveling all through history, recorded and documented and recognized by many thousands upon thousands of people, you know, and knowing where I was, and knowing who I was in front of, and knowing the things that took place. Why all the subterfuge? And by taking me, abducting me in the middle of the night, in this timeline, as of today, and then try to keep it a secret from me. I don't know. I don't know. I had to tell you, if I did know... <clears throat> <clears throat> I'll tell you if I did know, but I don't know. You know, it's, to me, it's no big secret. To all of you, it's a real big secret, you know. But to me, it's just common knowledge. Been here for many millions of years. Know a great deal of things that humans don't know. But it's in this that... I know that they're my family, too. But why not keep in contact with me as a family member and train me, train me, teach me how to use my abilities to better all of humanity? I mean, you have a person here, me, who is actually taking pictures of himself in heaven and on earth at the same time. So... It's just coming natural to me, you know. I'm not trained to do this. I was never trained to do this. I'm just simply this person who has experienced these things and a lot of stuff has happened. And as a result, you can see the proof of it. I'm showing and sharing the proof of it. A lot of people can't comprehend because they're not that smart. But, you know, I can teach you and show you. But I can't understand it for you, you know. But that will make a lot of people aggravated because they don't understand. Well, I'm sorry, you know. But when it comes to me on my part, okay, let's just say, for instance, that you, when you were a kid and this stuff happened to you, okay, you drove an extraterrestrial technology. You got to push the buttons. And it was real cool. And you got to push the buttons to destroy. Because you gave witness to many people killing your elders. And you took your vengeance upon them. By buttoning the button inside the craft. By destroying their village. They chopped off my elders' heads. They killed my elders. So... I got back into the craft, and I destroyed their village. And I was just a kid. <clears throat> I 
So why all the subterfuge? You know? It doesn't make no sense to me other than the fact that they're doing things today that they should not be doing. Now, I knew from my experience being in the underground cities thousands of years ago before any of you people were in existence today. You people don't know about these things. But they were still taking humans. They've always taken humans. The extraterrestrials, who you call extraterrestrials. Me, I just call them my family members. Because to me, they are. They are. Now, to me, I can't really classify them as extraterrestrials because they've been here longer than humans have. I know this from experience because I helped create you. And that was millions of years ago. Being one of your ancient ancestor fathers. Just little time travel. That's all it is. You know. But I've been in the underground cities. I know what goes on there. Not that long ago, I was in one of the underground cities again, standing in front of my elders, who were of native indigenous. Three elders. And I was writing on the wall, making a petroglyph, something that I have always done, ever since I was a little kid. And a man came up and disturbed me while I was in a trance-like state. Recording on a rock, writing on a rock, something that you call rock art. To me, it's not rock art. But um, he got in my face and I woke up and I got pissed off. I was about to kick his ass. But I stopped myself and I sat down beside my elders. And I looked... I looked at my implant right here. I looked at my implant and I touched it. And one of my elders came up and sat beside me because we were all sitting on the ground in front of a fire, uh, a fire pit, but there was no fire there. There was no fire, but there was a fire pit there and my elders were sitting. And one of my elders came up and he touched me right here. He touched me and he... Went like this with his thumb, with his thumb, and I looked at his thumb, and, and I knew that he was touching me. That was okay because he was curious as to why I was looking at that, you know, this mark, and he felt it too. He knew he said something to the other elders, which I didn't know because it was in a different language. You see, I've I've never learned how to speak my elders' sacred language. I've always written on rocks. But I use telepathy to speak. That's a practice that's not, that's a practice that's long been forgotten. I still have this capability because I have, am, I have implants. That's what some of the implants are for. Telepathy. Sharing, sharing pictures through your mind. Sharing words. It's like a dream, but times 10 to the hundredth power to share the information in the blink of an eye. It's pretty cool, really. But The only time I get to do that is with my elders, who are both of extraterrestrial and of native. And um, I can't do it to the white people because their brains are not that smart. They don't know how to do this. So it's basically a one way communication. It's like talking to a brick wall. But um, why all this subterfuge? Why keep me away from my family members who I love and respect very much and not let me interact with them on a daily basis like I've always wanted? I'm not a bad person. Many bad things happened to me in my childhood. And it's in this that I also fought evil in heaven. And I admit some of that evil got into me. I even have the proof of it right here. And I 
got rid of the evil. I pushed it out of me. So, you know, that's a very hard thing to do is to push out evil inside of you. And especially when you recently just found out it's been controlling your whole life. I mean, your whole life. You're basically feeling like you're walking behind yourself, looking up on top of yourself, and someone else is driving your body, kind of like the movie Avatar. Like an avatar. That's how I was for a very long time. Because something was inside of me that wasn't me. And I forced it out. So. It's no easy task, especially if you have no training and no one to help you. <clears throat> Something I guess that you have to just do naturally by yourself if you're strong enough. I have did that. I have the pictures of it. <clears throat> you know, but I love my family members very much. I love all my family members and I respect my family me my family members. <laughs> I get sinuses that drain. Sorry. I love and respect my family members very much. And I want to be included in a lot of their lives. You know. I think I deserve that right. After all, I've been here for such a very long time. And I've been through so much. And a lot of this stuff... That is about us. I'm directly involved in it. I'm directly related into all of it. So. I just don't understand why I can't be an everyday part of the family like I used to be thousands of years ago. Be it driving or sitting down inside of a craft, helping. Or just sitting along, <clears throat> just sitting around with my elders and learning. Because I would like that. I'm not getting any younger, that's for sure. Here recently also, I was milked like a cow. They put some white kind of silicone substance over my private area. Like a, you know that <clears throat> white silicone stuff that goes around your bathtub? You know that white silicone stuff? It was like that. It was very sticky. Because I guess it was kind of glued on to me. And I was basically was milked like a cow. But when I was in there, in this facility, they had um, makeshift lights. Makeshift lights from the ceiling. Like you see in the schools. They're hanging down from the ceiling with this little, um, this um, kind of like a chain, pieces of chain. From the, from the ceiling to hold up the lights. You know, the square long lights that use the fluorescent lights. They had a great deal of those all around in this underground place. And um, they had these these devices where people were formed of people. Like a form of a human. But you can see where a human was to be placed inside of there. And there were rows and rows and rows of those. And I've seen a person, a man... And I guess he was being milked also, but he was like in a cold sweat. I mean, he was all like watery down, watered down and stuff. It was weird. And, um, well, I got up, I pulled that thing off of my private area and here I am running around naked. Just got done being milked like a cow below my belly button, right below my belly button. That area, that whole area hurt something bad, like sore, really, really bad. All the way to my privates. It hurt really, really bad. And, um, let's just say it wasn't pleasurable. It hurt a lot. And, um, there I was hiding. I was running around this place, this facility underground. And then there were extraterrestrials there. They were more like extraterrestrial robots, kind of like. And, um,. Well, it was short. And I was trying to keep my thoughts clear because I knew where I was. 
but I was looking for a place to hide and escape, even though I was naked. I mean, barefoot naked. And, um, well, I didn't get very far. Let's just say that. And next thing I know, I black out. I'm standing right in front of one, catches me. And uh, black out, and I'm laying in bed again. And I wake up, and that sticky stuff is all over my, right above my, my private area. That sticky stuff. And um, I was sore all over. You know, down there. And this goes into also, <clears throat> you know, this, there's a, I haven't, I haven't watched any of it yet. I haven't watched any of this yet, but it's on TV called WandaVision. WandaVision. It's the same thing that what Wanda is experiencing what she is going through, but like with extraterrestrials, you're in a place, a facility, and you're made to see stuff that's not really there, but then again, it is there, but then again, it isn't, and you're in a dream state, lucid state, running around, trying to figure out what the hell's going on. I seen that right away, and I knew instantly what that was about. It was about abduction. It was about extraterrestrials coming in contact with humans and them doing shit to you. Experimenting. The same thing is going on with the WandaVision. Except she was a witch. And I'm one of the elders. And I have already known about this stuff. Because I already dealt with all this. But why all the subterfuge? Why... When I say this, you know, like, hey, we're going to come pick you up today. You can let you look out the window of the craft and stuff. It'll be real cool. I'll be like, cool, that's so cool. That's so neat. Thanks a lot. What's your name? You know, just being friendly. Being a person who has a lot of feelings and a lot of love. Being a person who's went up through all this shit and no one's really said anything to me about it. No one's given me a reward for fighting the world's greatest evil and walking away from it. No one's given me a reward for that. No one's given me a, an award to standing up to the Nazis who was trying to rape the lady's staff member and me biting the bastard as hard as I could on his arm and him backhanded me on my ass in the dirt. No one's given me a award for standing up to a Nazi with a gun. And it's been recorded and documented. No one's given me an award for helping save humanity and helping create humanity. No one's given me any awards for <clears throat> discovering so much, participating in so much and being so young. <clears throat> so I think all the subterfuge has got to stop. I mean, it's a lot of bullshit. You know, I don't respect that. I'm way too smart for this. I know that the places, some of the places I've been taken to off and on, we're at, actually at a facility like it, would you call S4, like Area 51. That's like a no-brainer for me, you know. Especially what I've seen come out of the sky and land right before my feet. <laughs> that damn thing was louder than a garbage truck. And then a white man came out with the white hair. He had white hair. He had a green jumpsuit on. And he was like, who are you? And then moments later after that, a dark-haired woman, short, very attractive, black military uniform. Who the hell are you and how the hell did you get here? Me, I was naked. Looked up. Then I'm being escorted inside this facility. There's two guards right behind me with rifles. I'm walking down this little slope, little slope ravine place into this facility. It had two street lights on either side. And um, she's yelling at the, the pilot who drove that craft, whatever it was. To me, it looked like a flying garbage truck. Yelling at him, and he didn't know who I was. He didn't know where I came from. 
He just landed. Me, I was watching him land. <laughs> now, how did I get there? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Secret secrets. Max, quit it. Quit being so dirty. But, you know, I don't like the subterfuge. You know. You know, bring me in. I could play ball, you know. Um, I know more than most, I know more than all the humans on top of the surface of the world. Been here, you know, long time. I just don't understand how they know that I've driven extraterrestrial technology. Time traveled all through history, recorded and documented, recorded on petroglyphs, everything. And then treat me like this. I feel kind of makes me feel kind of like like an animal, you know, like how they would treat you. But I'm not that way. I'm very different. I'm very different from the human species. <sighs> very different indeed. So I wonder what's up next. I wonder what's oh I can practically like basically I can see what's gonna be next. <clears throat> but time does tell. You know. Just gotta be realistic, gotta be honest, gotta be truthful, gotta be morally correct. So much more. Gotta be brave. Got to be, you know, loyal to my elders, which I am. I love my family members. I just don't like being alone through all of this when I shouldn't have to be. I could be with my elders and I'd feel like I have my family back. Because that was the, the greatest thing for me was in the underground city, which is located in the Grand Canyon thousands of years ago before the great flooding of Earth, was to be with everybody inside of this underground city, right before the great flooding of Earth. To be with so many people from all different walks of life on the Earth. To be happy and be family, even though I did have the bad diarrhea. I was truly happy. For once in my life, I was happy. I had family. Have all that taken away from me. You know. And to travel in time and come to this timeline have every bit of your family taken away from you in a matter of a second because it's been thousands of years that went by. So. And I know that there's family members living underground because I was there, what, last year? And I got to see some and I was so happy. I felt so relieved for that one moment I got down all my hands and knees, and my, my hands and knees, and I started running around like a little frog. So happy, jumping around everywhere. Something that I haven't felt in thousands of years. But that man, he did disturb me. I was doing something sacred. And I wish he wouldn't have disturbed me. I wish I would have got to finish what I was doing on the side of that wall in the underground city. That was last year. When I was taken again. <clears throat> this last year, I can probably say I was taken at least 30 to 40 times. And this year, I can say I was probably taken about three times so far. Three to four times. Never get to talk to my elders. 
never get to let them never I never get allowed to be I never get the chance to speak to them to tell them what I know to give my to give my report to give you know the proof and knowledge that I have to them as family like we all should like we used to and I never get to hear them talk to me in here And I look at all you people today who are so clueless to as to actually what's going on. And to hear so much speculation and contradicting. And people say, well, I don't know. When I've always known. Because I've always been here. But to get treated like this today. That really hurts. I wish I had my family. I wish they cared about me as much as I care about them. I wish I was talked to. I wish I was trained and taught how to use my abilities. Because humanity has never gave witness to such. And here I am doing it just going outside. I don't know if I have a control over it or not. I mean, if I were to go outside and lay down and go to sleep, and if you were to record over my head in heaven, I think it would scare the crap out of you. And you would probably say, I don't want to ever see those that stuff again and I'll say well you're gonna have to get used to it because one of these days you're gonna go up there too and you're gonna have to deal with this yourself but you won't have a voice here on the surface to tell anybody about it and look at me I am being one of your angels being one of your time travelers, being one of your ancient astronauts, being one of your ancient ancestor fathers is a very sacred thing. I just wish my family members knew that I love them very much. And I wish they can give me hugs and love too.